Welcome back guys, it is cake time. In today's video, we are going to be going through how I accomplished this marble tie-dye rainbow look using melted icing. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, for my nephew's birthday, he was having a tie-dye themed. My sister-in-law reached out to me to see if I could pull off a tie-dye cake and of course I accepted the challenge. Now, I've seen people in the past do um, like a white fondant and paint on a tie-dye um, like swirl going on. I've seen them do blotches of icing and kind of like smear it all together to give it like a fun kind of um, all over the place colored type of look. Sorry, I don't know what my words are right now. Um, but I wanted to try something different. So I wanted to achieve a fun like marbled tie-dye look without using mirror glaze. Now, from all of my research, I've never actually done mirror glaze, but from the research I've done, it's mostly made out of gelatin to give it that shine and that look. And this is for a smash cake. So I, one, didn't want a bland, weird, yucky, I've heard it smells weird because it's just like clear gelatin with no flavor. And I also didn't want a hard shell around this cake to where, you know, a one-year-old trying to go in there and you have solid jello um, making it a little bit tougher to get through. So I decided to steer away from the mirror glaze and figure out how to do it with melted icing. I researched quite a bit to try to give me something as a guideline and honestly didn't come across any information that was helpful. So I decided to figure it out myself, go through multiple rounds of trial and error, and once I finally figured it out, present that information to you guys so that if someone out there like me is looking to do something a little bit different and just needs some type of guidance, I'm here for you. I can have something that will help you out and kind of lead you on your way. So I'm going to try to keep this nice and short. However, I want to be very thorough to walk you guys through my do's and don'ts of what works for me and what did not work for me. That way you guys know and I can hopefully save you from a little bit of a headache and a lot of frustration. So I think I did this pour one, two, three, four different times, four different times. Okay. So what I began with is I was doing six inch round, round cakes for the smash cakes. I like to use six inch round pans. Um, sometimes I just do one layer, sometimes two, just depending on kind of what the person is wanting. Um, in this case, I wanted to do two cause I wanted it to be nice and big and fun. Um, with that, so I just use um, a box of cake mix. So I was able to make three rounds with this. So two six inch rounds. And then the other one I think is a five inch. I just threw it in a little Pyrex bowl and baked the extra just to have um, on hand. But I decided since it was gonna have the extra cake, I was going to use that as a practice. Now, I prepped both of these cakes the night before. So I prepped, I mean, I, you know, got the, I let them cool, got them out of the pan, got them ready and did a crumb coat. Now for the little practice cake, I just took it out of the pan, crumb coated it, left it as is. For the other cake, like I do with all of my cakes, because it's embedded in my head that you level your cakes. So by leveling, if you don't know, most cakes when they bake have some type of mound or round on the top and you basically cut it flat um, to where your layers are the same size and nice and flat and even, that way it looks really professional. There's no lean to it, it's nice and sturdy. Um, so that's what I did because that's what I'm used to doing. I went ahead and got that stacked up, crumb coated it, left them both overnight, came back to them the next morning to try doing this icing pour. Now, I'll get into the exacts here in a little bit, but basically what I'm doing is I'm coloring, I'm separating out some icing, I'm coloring it, and I'm melting it down to a consistency to where I can pour it over top of the cake. For my practice cake, I didn't worry too much about the colors because it was just for practice. I was worried more about the consistency of the icing and if it was going to work. And let me tell you, it worked beautifully. It poured perfectly. It, it fell down the sides beautifully. I didn't love the color scheme, but again, I wasn't going for the colors. I was going for the texture, the pour, and it turned out great. So I was like, you know what? I got this. I was feeling confident and I was like, yeah, first try. That's right. No. Okay, so moving on to the second cake. Like I said, I had leveled the top. Now this is very important because I didn't quite figure out what was happening until the third pour. So what happened was I colored on my icing, I got it all down, I um, 
went ahead and melted it down, made sure it was to the consistency that I needed, and I began to pour. Now, what I didn't realize was that it there were chunks. Um, the white doesn't melt as easily as the stuff with the dye in it. I guess the dye kind of already changes the consistency, makes it a little more runnier. So I think what happened was the white icing that I had put in between the layers was just not melted all the way. So when as I was pouring it, I could see the chunks happening. And the fact that it was flat, it wasn't, gravity wasn't just pulling it over the edges like I anticipated, like it happened so well in the first one. So two things, two things went wrong. I had, I didn't have a mounded top and I didn't have um, good fluid icing to pour over top. So what was happening is those clumps were being pushed to the edge. It was kind of catching it. And then until it was ready to overflow, that's when it went down the sides but it wasn't going down and covering every side. It just wasn't working out the way that it did on the first one. And I was very disappointed. Um, I did try to just use a knife and kind of spread it and see if that wouldn't mess it up too much. Um, if it would try to save some colors, I was just very unhappy with it. I scraped the entire thing, re crumb coated it, put it back in the fridge and went in for a round two. So I did the same thing. I um, used up all my colors. Now you can, do this with any colors that you want or I mean anything where you would want that marble or like tie-dye theme whatever colors you're going for I think it would turn out really well with just about anything this particular one we were doing a rainbow tie-dye so that's the colors I went for I mixed those all back up went in for my second pour my consistency of my icing was great I poured it and again it worked much better this time but it just didn't fully go down on the sides. It wasn't completely going over the edges. At this point, I didn't realize what the problem was. I was just very frustrated. Um, I actually pulled out my heat gun to kind of hit those spots that weren't going down all the way to try to help encourage the icing to melt down and cover it. Um, obviously, it's not like ideal to do, but I didn't know what else to do in that moment. Um, and now I have better suggestions for you. So, that was the second one, um, melting kind of the icing down, um, taking some that was left over in the jar, scooping colors, kind of patting it on there to give the icing something to run down through. Um, so just kind of like paint. The paint is dripping. It doesn't want to go where paint hasn't been before. So if you kind of like smear in a little bit of those spots, it'll kind of just run down over top of it. It's the same idea for the icing. So I went ahead and went on with this cake because I it was for my nephew's birthday party and I want to make sure it wasn't going to be late and that we had a cake to show up with. So I left it alone. Um, I went ahead and piped a border around it, took it. They loved it, but I just was not happy. I wasn't, I know I could do better. And it was in that moment after I finished the second cake, I was talking to my boyfriend and I was like, it works. Why didn't this work? And he said, I know why and you're not going to like the answer. And so he said, look at the two cakes and tell me what's different. And that's when it clicked. He said, you're literally working against gravity gravity because there that one's flat and it has nowhere to run to, whereas the first one was kind of mounded. And so it, you know, would push it all down off the sides. So I worked on my second or my third cake, which would be my fourth pour. So I went ahead and baked up some more cakes because like I said, I'm a perfectionist, you guys, and I cannot, if I know what something is supposed to be and I can't get it to look like that, I can't go to sleep. Like it drives me insane, especially now knowing how simple it was to fix the problem. There's no way I'm going to bed tonight without figuring that out. So I came home and I baked up another cake, um, another couple cakes. I went ahead and prepped them. So what I did this time, I wanted a two-layer two cake. I picked which one I liked that had the most even top. And then on the other one, I leveled it, used that as the bottom layer, put my icing in the middle, layered the second one on top. And then um, this one I did have to cut down to size a little bit. Now what you want to do is make sure you have a cake board underneath it. Um, I had one that I kind of traced around and cut down to make sure it was just slightly smaller than the bottom of my cake. The reason I am doing this is so that there's nothing to catch the icing when we do pour it. It's You want it to completely fall down and not hit a flat surface to where it's pulling around the cake. So I just cut down a cake board that would fit right underneath it. Um, 
I put some icing down to make sure the cake's not sliding around and then went ahead and crumb coated this cake. Now, when I did cut down that second layer to match the top layer, a little bit of cake board was sticking out. That's not a big deal. At that point, you can still take your kitchen scissors and cut it down to be the size that you want. Just be very careful as you're holding it. Obviously, you don't want to drop the cake. Then you want to chill the cake for at least 20 minutes. Now, keep that in mind. You're going to be dumping melted icing on top. Now, it's not going to be super warm or like hot to the touch or anything, but it will heat up the crumb coat a little bit. So you want to just keep that in mind. So make sure you give it plenty of time during the chill process of the crumb coat and chill. Um, that's Yolanda if you don't know. But um, so once that is ready, while that is, sorry, while that is chilling, you can start getting everything else ready. Now what I did is I knew I wanted the whole rainbow. I got the amount of bowls that I needed. I got my dye. I got my icing. For this size cake, I am using one um, can of icing. Now keep in mind, this is what worked for me for the type of icing that I am using. Every icing has a slightly different consistency, so you will have to kind of adjust your heat times probably, but this is what worked best for me with what I am using. So, um, and when I say one can, I used one can for this, I used one can of icing for the actual pour that's not including the icing used for the crumb coat. So I used two full, not full containers, but two icing packs for this entire little experiment. So I had enough bowls out, I went ahead and I dyed all of the colors of my icing. All of the ones that I needed. Now a little trick, um, if you want to make it a little easier to spread a canned icing that you've pre-bought from the store um, or to help you make it easier when you're separating it, separating it out, make sure you take the peel off the like aluminum top, just the can of icing, stick it in the microwave for 15 seconds. It's just going to, it's not going to melt it, but it's going to soften it, mix it up really well, and it just makes it slide and glide a lot easier. Um, so that's just a little tip for you if, you know, sometimes with really hard icing or like when you're doing your crumb coat, if it's really hard icing, it like rips the cake up more and just causes problems. So that's just a little tip for you. Um, so I did that beforehand. That way it just made it easier to scoop it out and it also makes it a lot easier to mix in your dye. So I colored all of the ones that I needed and I also kept some for white because I wanted to put a little bit of white in between each layer just to keep the colors from mushing together, um, just to keep some separation. So what I did is I heated mine for 20 seconds. So this, like I said, this is going to depend. I think my um, microwave is a thousand watts. So just keep that in mind. Um, I would suggest if you're unsure, do it for 15 second intervals. That way you're not overheating the icing or um, I don't know, causing any problems. So I did mine for 20 seconds. I peeked on it and you want it to be really liquidy and runny. So I brought that back out. I mixed them up and I start pouring them into just a measuring cup. Um, we're going to do what most would call in like the acrylic pour painting, the dirty pour, um, which is kind of where I got the idea to do this because I do dabble with like acrylic pouring. So we're going to do a dirty pour. Now what you need to remember is that whatever color is on the bottom of the cup is what's going to be on top of your cake, the very top of your cake. So I didn't want the blues and purples on the top of the cake. I wanted the reds. So I started with the red and then I just went through the rainbow to where I ended with purple on top. Um, and then by the time I am done with that, they are stiffening up a little bit. So I needed to reheat them again just to make sure that I'm going to get a really nice really glossy pour. So I took my icing back over and I heated it back up for 25 seconds. Now it's really liquidy and ready to go. Um, before I heated my icing up for the first time, like after I mixed them all together for the dyes, I set them aside before heating them and I did get my cake prepped. Sorry, I'm doing this a little out of order. It's a lot to remember. Um, so to do that, I let it chill. I took it back out. You're going to want a baking sheet or something, um, even parchment paper would work um, to catch the icing that's going to be falling over the edges. And then you're going to need some type of cooling wrap. That way it can fall through. So I just took mine, I put it over top of my baking rack and I put the cake right on top in the middle. Fast forward, we have melted our icing. Again, we did um, 
melted it down to pour it into the measuring cup. Then we did it for, um, I think 25 seconds in the measuring cup itself to make sure it's nice and liquidy. So I just put my hands on the outside and um, made sure that the measuring cup wasn't too hot. That way the the icing itself, if it's too runny, it's just going to all fall off of the cake. If it's too thick, it's not going to run and be smooth. So you have to really catch it right in the middle. Um, and so it's kind of sloshing, kind of tell that it's in a really good state. That's when I started to pour. Now your the way you pour it is gonna make it look different. The way I like to pour it and what worked best for me. So the first cake I did, I, I kind of poured it and circled it like this. For the next one, I liked it better when I held it still and I poured it nice and like slower, but not too slow. I don't know. You just have to see the video to kind of oh, see. And then I slowly turned my Lazy Susan as I did it. And I really liked that look a little bit better. But again, it's going to be your preference. This is what worked for me. Um, so that's what I did. And it started flooding down beautifully. However, there was one side that didn't fully go down. So again, I took my spatula put it in the container with all those colors, tapped the side of the cake, and then kind of spun my Lazy Susan a little bit to kind of bring that down back over top of it. And it looks pretty good. I mean, there are some flaws in it, but you're gonna have that and have to just kind of accept it because, you know, it's really hard to get like the absolute perfect top. It's not a glaze, so it's gonna be a little chunkier sometimes. It's not gonna always fall just perfectly. So just keep that in mind, but I really, really, really love how this looked. I'm so like frustrated that I didn't accomplish it to begin with just because of the flat top issue, but I'm very happy with it now. All right, so now that we've poured that, now that we like the way it looks, we need to put it back in the fridge and let it harden up that way um, not too much drips off the sides and that it's going to stay in place, harden back up and be good to where if you bump it, it's a little bit forgiving because the last thing we want to do is to ruin this beautiful coat that we've put over it. There's not going to really be a good way to hide it if there's any mistakes. Okay, so after you have let that chill some more, it is time to remove it from the rack and put it onto your cake board or whatever it is you're going to be carrying it on. So um, I actually happened to run out of my small cake boards because I did this so many times. Um, so I'm just gonna put it on my little metal, um, like bottom of my like spring pan. Uh, so I want to move it to there and y'all watch me drop this cake. <sighs> just be very careful. Um, so make sure you're using some flat spatulas. You want to get up underneath the cake board to help lift it off and very carefully transport it over to the cake or to whatever you're putting it on. Now I have done this three different times today. And of course on the one that I really like the finish on, that's the one I dropped. So thankfully it wasn't too bad. Um, I was able to put it on there and save it. So once you transported it just kind of take your spatula and tuck the edges around just a little bit to make sure that they're in place and then you can put a border around the edge to kind of hide any of those imperfections and ta-da you have a beautiful rainbow well maybe you didn't do rainbow but you have a beautiful marbled tie-dye cake so I love this technique. I hope to get to try it again in the future. Um, if you guys have any questions or need to, me to clarify or if I miss anything. My brain's kind of a little bit mush right now from trying this so many times. But again, like I said, I wanted to do the trial and error so that I can report to you guys and try to save you some time. So the big key factors are to make sure your, your cake is some type of rounded. So it can be a sphere cake. It can just have a rounded top like mine did. Um, but you need something to where it's going to naturally just kind of flow off of the sides. And then make sure as you're pouring it, you know, you'll kind of see where it's falling off to one side and not the other. You can kind of adjust your pour to make sure it goes down all of the sides. If it happens to not, you can kind of touch it with the spatula and help that kind of go down or kind of blend it in. Um, if it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, that's okay. That's what a border is for. 
Um, as you can see in my cake, there was an imperfection where I dropped it and I have like a gap at the bottom. So what I did when I did my border and I got to that, I filled that in with icing and then I put my border around it. Um, it just helped the border have something to stick up against and make it look a little more natural like I didn't mess it up. So whatever but um if you guys have any tips or tricks for me of uh, if you well if you've tried this that's awesome please share with me what works for you guys um but if you think this is a pretty cool idea give me a thumbs up i truly appreciate any of the interactions that you guys give me on my videos liking them, commenting on them. It really, really helps me out a ton. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I work very hard to bring you guys great content um, and knowing that you guys like it enough to stick around makes me very happy. If you're returning, you know I love you. I am so appreciative of you. I hope that this video was helpful in some way. If not, it's just really cool to watch. Um, I think I covered everything of what I did and what worked for me. So again, if I've missed anything, comment below, ask me questions. I'm more than happy to try to go deep or further into an explanation. Um, I will kind of hit a, a few things in the description so that maybe if I miss something here, you'll be able to find it there. Um, check out my other cake videos check out any of my other videos really consider joining me on my facebook group page um there is where you can post any of your own projects and creations it is really for anything whether you do cakes or diys or any crafting i just like to inspire creativity in others and that's a place where we can bounce ideas off of each other share our projects with each other and just kind of have a sense of community so please, please join me over there. I really appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.